In today's feature segment, immigration reform. Many of the nation's farming areas use some hand labor, but areas like Florida and California lead the nation. California's Central Valley is described by many as the nation's salad bowl. It takes many farm workers, mostly Mexicans, to harvest the food that feeds much of the nation. Many of the farms there want a guest workers program as part of immigration reform. They say the number of farm workers is falling and without the workers, they can't plant. Market to Market's David Miller reports. A good share of the nation's winter fruits and vegetables are grown on nearly three million acres of irrigated cropland in California's Central Valley. Water and labor have a unique relationship in California. Without the water, there are no crops. Without the labor, the crops would never leave the field. In 2009, reduced snowpack in the Sierra Nevada mountains caused a reduction in water to Central Valley farmers. The loss triggered an avalanche of unemployment that hit over 40 percent in some valley communities. Joe Del Bosque is a second generation farmer from Fireball, California. Del Bosque idled more than a third of his 2,200 acres during the drought, diverting precious water from vine ripened fruits and vegetables to his fruit and nut trees. We've had those cutbacks for, for 20 years here in agriculture, so we understand them, and we've kind of learned to roll with the punches. Um, it's not easy. When, when, if we had 2009 again in 2010, I may not be standing here, because we could roll through one year, but not through two. Besides trying to get and keep fresh water in the nation's salad bowl, the combination of a 50-year-old infrastructure and demand from 37 million citizens has placed a huge burden on the state's water supply. To combat cuts to Central Valley farmers, California voters will decide in the fall if $11.4 billion in improvements are going to be made to the Golden State's aging water system. But even if water allocations return to 100 percent, getting the fruits and vegetables out of the field remains a problem for Central Valley farmers. As immigration regulations have been tightened over the past few years, the number of people available to pick, process, and pack fruits and vegetables has declined. Number one, uh, closing the borders has affected our, our labor. Uh, number two, uh, fewer people are immigrating from south of the border into our area. And you know, number three is we have a government that can't seem to get together um, a, an immigration reform plan, and, and we, we desperately need that. Um, if we had a law here in California like, like Arizona, uh, our fresh fruit and vegetable industry would be dead. The Pew Hispanic Center, a nonpartisan research agency, says there are approximately 11 million illegal immigrants in the United States. The U.S. Census Bureau believes there are nearly 2 million undocumented workers in California. Some of them are helping bring in the nearly $40 billion worth of fruits and vegetables produced in California farm fields annually. While the work is labor intensive, farmers in the region say they only need people for a limited time each year. Our demands for labor out here are seasonal. There are huge demands in July, August, September. There's not enough people here to fill those demands. So we really need to have a guest worker program to bring a lot of people in legally, pick the crops, go back home. It's truly my belief that if we'd had this 30 or 40 years ago, we would not have the immigration problem that we have today. Daniel Jackson is an eighth generation farmer from Reedley, California. Jackson believes most of the immigrant workers he employs to pick and process the bounty from the family's 4,000 acres of fruit trees want to earn money and return to their homes across the border. Our labor force that we have is predominantly, um, maybe 99% Hispanic. Um, a lot of these people are coming from other countries and we need immigration reform. We do, no doubt about it. There needs to be a lot of reform done for our labor force to be able to get up here to work legally, not take advantage of our tax system, nobody likes that, and then to be able to go back home and stay there for four or five months and come back and work if they wanted to do that. A recent CBS New York Times poll 
showed more than 60 percent of Americans felt illegal immigrants should either be allowed to apply for U.S. citizenship or stay as guest workers. Opinion polls aside, Jackson is among the farmers and ranchers in the Central Valley who have attempted to get unemployed American citizens in the area to help during labor shortages. We have gone to the unemployment offices before and asked for workers. And one day we needed 300 workers to come out and pick zucchinis for us. And what ha ended up happening was is uh, they were very excited. They gave us all the applications. We were excited the next day uh, when we were ready to pick, 10 people showed up. That's the reality of it. The reality of it is, is people that are unemployed or that are here as Americans do not want to do agriculture jobs, period. Manuel Cunha is president of the Nice Farmers League, a San Joaquin Valley-based farmer advocacy group with 1,100 members. Because U.S. workers will not work in this type of work. They refuse to work in it. The only way they're ever going to work in it and God forbid that we go to a, a real depression of 1929. During the immigration amnesty program in the 1980s, the Nisei Farmers League helped the federal government process undocumented workers. So we're, we're in a situation where we rely on our farm employees that are here in this state um, to have a, a job and to farm that land with our growers. So we need that labor, but to do that, we got to have the water. If I don't have the water, then I'm going to lose all those workers. And after a while, if I don't have enough water here all the time, they're going to leave. They're not coming back here. What happens to that production? To the tree fruit, the grapes, the almonds, the walnuts, the vegetables. They all begin to start to dry up. Because at the end of the day, I've got to have a workforce. And if I don't have a water system and I don't have an economic system of water, then I can't grow these crops. So then I might as well just turn this valley and other areas into urbanization and just build houses, because that's what I'm going to plan to do. Cunha, Jackson, and Del Bosque are like many farmers in the region who believe the answer to the immigration problem in California requires cooperation among politicians on both sides of the aisle. But at the end of the day, Del Bosque and others will continue to focus on things close at hand. Our goal is to feed the nation. For Market to Market, I'm David Miller. And you can watch this story again on California farm labor on our Farm Week website. That's farmweek.msucares.com. You can also watch Farm Week stories on YouTube and the Farm Week Facebook page. We'll also have a link to the Market to Market websites where you can see the story as well as read the script. That's farmweek.msucares.com.